Ladies and gentlemen, how are you? My name is Wei Ko, uh, here at Watches and Winners 2023 at the Roger Dewey booth with the CEO, my friend Nicholas Ariata. How are you, sir? Very well, as always when I am in, in Geneva in Watches and Wonders. Excellent. Um, so there's a rapper who, uh, whose name we won't use because uh, he's like a bit out of fashion, but there's a line in his song that says, uh, we're going to do one song and one song only. And, and I like that because it's like uh, what you've done at the booth. You've got one watch and one watch only, but what a watch it is. And it is a concept watch in the same way that when you go to a car show, a brand will relaunch a car that is really um, pushing the very boundary of technology, right? And you've got some pretty amazing things in this hyper watch as well that showcase outside that we'll show you in close up um, when we enter some footage into the, uh, the film. Tell me a little bit about that watch. Well, as you mentioned, if there was a way to concentrate everything we've been working on for the past three years, that's exactly the one. Uh, we decided to use this watch as a platform to talk about performance, craftsmanship, and innovation at Roger Dewey. Uh, we started from uh, a split seconds chronograph, uh, built and designed in a very traditional way, one of the most complicated calibers you have in auto logerie today. And we added three patents, a new tourbillon system, uh, mm -hmm. which plays with gravity as we like to do to increase performance in a very different way. At 12 o'clock, we have a, a new oscillating mass system. Uh, we call it turbo rotor. Mm -hmm. And then we have a different or a new innovative system to display chronographic minutes. Okay. That was not enough. We designed, we designed a totally new case, which right. shows, if you want, the evolution of our spider collection. And we crafted it in MCF, mineral composite fiber, a material which is 60% lighter than ceramic and even lighter than carbon fiber this year in red, which is a color very dear to Jose Dewey. Okay, so let's talk about these different innovations. The first one is, uh, is a vortex type tourbillon, right, which completes a full rotation every two minutes. And it, 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 it traces a trajectory almost like a tornado, right? Like it, it kind of goes like vortex. that. Yeah, like a vortex. <laughs> Um, tell me, so you have obviously a top, a single tourbillons, you've got double tourbillons with uh, the uh, results averaged through a differential. You even have a watch with four different oscillators as well. Tell me about what these devices mean to Roger Dubuis and what this Vortex tourbillon uh, represents. Well, the quest for performance has been at the center of the Maison for since the very beginning, mm -hmm. since our early days. Now, you have different ways to uh, look for performance in a timepiece. One of them is that of controlling gravity. And the tourbillon was invented, in fact, to control gravity. Now, we have been trying many different things, as you mentioned, always playing with regulating organs, uh, be it uh, the balanciers, uh, so the balance wheels, or the a tourbillon. And it was not enough. Uh, you know, you can uh, compensate for gravity vertically, horizontally, you can be inclined, you can have multiple or uh, regulating organs. What we uh, try to achieve here is a regulating organ which turns, uh, turn, tur turns around, so averaging the gravity force uh, in a better way than any other system that has been invented before. Uh, now we are still testing the timepiece and uh, we, we will see if we were right when we designed and invented and engineered this timepiece. So the whole objective of having this hyper watch or this concept watch is to take different, you know, to push technology to the boundaries and then to, to test it to see how it works and then from there you'll use it, you'll disseminate it into other production pieces uh, as well. You mentioned the, the, the parallel, parallel with the automotive world. Right. This is ex exactly what we are doing at Roger Louis. We are taking our innovations, testing them all together and then cascading them to uh, the future collections that we're going to launch. In particular, for what concerns the innovation shown in this timepiece, we plan to issue them within the next 12 months oh, wow. on commercial timepieces. I mean, one of the kind of craziest things I saw is this, uh, I don't know how to describe it, it's like this a micro motor that looks like a barrel almost. And you, you know, you were mentioning before we started this video that you are very famous for the micro rotor. So you want to test yourselves and even challenge yourselves to create something that is completely out of left field in terms of its design. Like, how did this thing come about? Well, once again, we are never satisfied. So we started uh, with normal oscillating masses. We came with micro rotors. We had two micro rotors for the more demanding calibers we used uh, in the past. Now we told ourselves, once again, how can we improve the efficiency? So on one side, we control gravity, we reduce the force of gravity impacting the movement. On the other side, we use gravity. And simple thing, the gravity on a normal oscillating mass works para in, in a parallel way with respect to the force. 
Here, it works in a perpendicular way. Right. So ideally, again, on paper, it should be much more efficient. Right. Now, we completed the watch three days ago, okay. right before Watches and Wonders, right. and we started the testing phase. But just not only from a technical standpoint, but even from a, a look standpoint, it's an incredible, beautiful thing that we added to our watches. I think that's what's, what's so cool about the Hyper Watch is like the technology is very interesting, but it just looks really cool. Okay, let's talk about the split second chronograph as well because I love split second chronographs. I like that you came up with this cool minute counter that looks like it's, again, I haven't actually seen it functioning, but it looks like it's like a digital skeletonized minute counter that, that rotates, like, yeah. yeah, right? Well, very simple technically. Honestly, it's not a, a great invention, but it's a great idea. Okay. And sometimes the idea is more difficult to find than the way to realize it. Right. Here it, we have uh, simply uh, bigger numbers, so it's a, it's a counter that can show better in terms of uh, readability, uh, the, 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 the minutes of the chronograph. And we have a, 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 an indicator, a uh, three-part indicator, which turns right. and indicate uh, the minutes. Again, uh, pretty, simply, uh, pretty simple to execute, uh, not exactly uh, that simple to come up with the idea. In fact, we are patenting it. Okay, well, uh, the tourbillon is obviously like, you know, pushing the edge. The micro rotor is nuts, but kind of cool. Actually, really cool. Uh, the, the split second chronograph, probably you'll be able to implement relatively um, in a pretty straightforward way. But maybe the thing that is the, f the most straightforward yet the kind of most appealing to me is the style of the watch. Like, I really like the design of it, right? Mm -hmm. um, I like it, it feels like one of your watches, but like, <laughs> like I don't know how else to put it, like, yeah, like ramped up to like 11, yeah. you know? It's, it's about, it's constantly about evolution. Right. You know, in the past three years, we've been reinventing our iconic uh, collection, the Excalibur. We came uh, with the double flying tourbillon, single flying tourbillon, monobalancier. Uh, not only redesigning the case, but entirely re-engineering and redesigning our movements. And now we are starting uh, the, a kind of a, the same approach with our spider collection. Right. We are evolving it. And uh, this is the first, I would say, uh, glimpse or, of where we are going uh, with our new, uh, new uh, spider cases, with our new sporty approach. Uh, to uh, our fine watch I mean, what I dig about it is that, you know, so there's obviously like a rolls gold element to it as well, the pusher, and it looks like the inner case as well. But then the MCF component of it, like kind of wraps around all of that, and then it flows really smoothly, but in a very kind of cool arrow way into the strap, right? Absolutely. Um, MCF is like, so you guys have been experimenting with a lot of different materials. How did you come up across this material? And you mentioned it's, it's very uh, light. Is it very strong and it does have good surface hardness as well? It is very strong yet very easy to machine, okay. which is a key point for us, especially given the shapes that we create uh, right. within our, our timepieces. A few years ago, we came up with this idea that yes, we wanted something white, but it didn't have to be ceramic. Okay. And so we started researching. Um, great connection with Lamborghini gave us some ideas because they keep testing materials as well. Uh, but at the end, we came up with something internally. We have been de developing this uh, um, composite fiber, which starts from uh, sili uh, sili silicium. Uh, oh, really? Uh, yes. Okay. And then it's enhanced with some uh, ligand, uh, with some, uh, uh, I would say, uh, materials that help keeping, it, keeping the powder together. And we came up with this whitish material, which is uh, uh, very white. It's keeping its tone. It doesn't tarnish. It doesn't tarnish. So. Great thing, we use it for a few products, and then we kept researching, because we said, okay, now we have the material, can we make it in other colors? Up to the moment where we came with the red. As you know, there are not so many red materials in the market today. Yes, you can use ceramic once again, but we didn't want ceramic. We wanted something lighter than ceramic, and here we are with our red MCF. It's really cool, and I can't wait to see that like uh, in disseminated into a production model. Okay, let's talk about uh, some of the other watches that we have here. Uh, one of them is a your famous uh, Knights of the Round Table watch. This one has a central tourbillon, central flying tourbillon, and it has very beautiful Murano class inlaid. So it's a really nice combination of Metier de Art, uh, obviously with these hand sculpted figurines as well, but also a cool regulating device, which is one of your signatures. Eight pieces, all sold out. There's a lot of rich people in the world, and they all seem to like your watches. Tell me, tell me what's going on. You there know? are a lot of people who appreciate yeah. beauty okay. and beautiful crafts <laughs> right. and our craftsmanship right. that we display in this timepiece. Well, historically, uh, Knights of the Round Table is probably the most iconic collection we have. We came uh, to the ninth edition of it. We have clients waiting year after year just for this timepiece. Wow. We are client collecting all of them. 
And this was simply a way for us to even enhance our Knights of the Round Table collection. In the past, it was the collection where we've been showing our, mostly our craftsmanship with a, a métier d'art that we almost invented ourselves. The fact that sculpting the knights, these figures on the dial uh, by hands, each one is sculpted by hands, was in fact what we wanted to feature with this timepiece. Last year we told ourselves, okay, craftsmanship is there, let's put a little bit of horological content into it. And so we decided to put a central tourbillon so that the tourbillon and the knights fight together against the gravity. <laughs> I like <laughs> that it. was the storytelling behind it. <laughs> and it was super appreciated. Again, That's we nice. have clients who follow Knights of the Round Table, and especially this edition, we had clients who jumped on it the moment they saw it. It's cool because I love the Knights of the Round Table from a sculptural perspective, but it, this adds an additional level of animation to it, which gives like, when you look at it, there's something you know really vibrant going on. No, I was kind of joking before, but actually I'm kind of serious because I live in Singapore, right? Um, and over the last couple of years, the influx of like super high net worth people has been crazy, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, if, and, and as a result, if you look at things in that category, in the like extreme luxury category, like Bugattis or Koenigseggs or even like ultra luxury apartments in Singapore, everything's sold out. And there's so many people chasing specifically this category. Where you have decided to position yourself firmly in this place, Absolutely. right? Talk to me about hyper horology, talk to me about that client, and talk to me most importantly about how do you win over hearts and minds. Very good point. Uh, uh, you said it, I mean, there is a, a special hype in the high end of uh, the watchmaking world these days, but at the same time, I feel like there has been a democratization of uh, the fine watchmaking with social networks, with yeah. all the information you can find, there are more and more people getting closer to it, and valuing the art of watchmaking in a different way. They are looking for something more sophisticated, more elevated. That was also part of the reason why we decided to stop the entry level at Roger de Bouille, where, you know, in a way we were not really expressing the added value that this maison can put into a timepiece, simply because they were covered by a dial. Right. So you do all the amazing things we do with our Geneva seal certification, with the finishing of every component by hand, and then you close it, <laughs> and then you put a dial on it. Right. Ah, that was not the, not the thing. way for us to work. Right. And so, yes, we open up all our calibers, we work now with only skeletonized timepieces, and we see more and more appreciation, especially from wealthy people, from affluent uh, clients, who have everything, who have experienced everything, who potentially have have been a connoisseur within the watchmaking world of the classic fine watchmaking. We come with a, an alternative offer. Uh, we want to, anyway, be a credible uh, alternative to the fine classic watchmaking world. And here is where, Jose, we start to get more and more ground, talking to new generations who potentially do not want to wear what their parents, their fathers, their mothers want, uh, were wearing years ago. And Roger de Bouille represents the future of watchmaking with our hyper approach, so always going beyond. Right. Hyper is a Greek prefix which stands for beyond. Uh, we said that oh, nice. Roger de Bouille, if there is one word to define it, it will be excess. Excess, <laughs> the Latin of excess means ex cedo, going beyond. And the purpose of the company is to go beyond. Right. So now we are, we, we are very current with our messaging. Okay, last question. Uh, so you're a basketball fan. Yes. And you were a very accomplished player, if I'm not mistaken, as well. I used to. Okay, so <laughs> 2022 was probably the best year the watch industry has ever experienced when I start looking at everyone's results. But 2022 is the equivalent of an NBA championship year where you had Kobe, LeBron, and Michael Jordan sitting it out. <laughs> because the mainland Chinese basically sat out 2022. Very they true. were in lockdown pretty much the entirety of the year and were only released from the zero COVID policy at the very end of last year. Now, we don't see the effect of it yet in the rest of the world, but internally within mainland China, it's going nuts, right? Absolutely. And, and of course, the mainland Chinese are gonna keep their citizens within the country as much as they possibly can to re-stimulate their economy first. Very true. Right, but we already see it in Singapore. Like, when you go to a three Michelin star restaurant in Singapore, if you go to the Lamborghini dealership, if you go to a Richard Mille boutique, the language being spoken there is Mandarin, not English, which is why we're pivoting to create video content in Chinese in Singapore to serve that, that client. How are you going to reach that client, which we believe in Q3 and Q4 will be the major driving force at the end of 23 and into 24? We won't reach them, they will reach us. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> in the sense that in the past three years, we did a tremendous work 
in increasing our presence in mainland China. Uh, Pre-COVID, we had a huge amount of clients who were shopping outside of China, uh, but Chinese, right. uh, Chinese uh, citizens. When China got closed because of the pandemic, we've been st we started our investment plan. We opened four boutiques in China right. in two years. Wow. Um, and we started a big investment also in terms of marketing play uh, to connect better with our clientele. So we do believe that when they will start traveling once again, uh, we will have a bigger flow of Chinese uh, clients uh, coming to our boutiques around the world. We are already seeing it. Uh, we are seeing it in MBS in Singapore, in nice. Ion in Singapore, so our two boutiques there. Right. We are seeing it in Macau, right. uh, which has started uh, growing again. We are seeing it in Hong Kong. So uh, we are ready for that. Amazing. Thank you, sir. It's Thank always you. a pleasure. Cheers.